Good morning. Today's project is new for me. I'm going to be doing some sort of carpentry, cabinetry stuff. It'll be my first time rabbiting if I end up doing that. It's basically an open style shelving and some drawers. It'll, it'll be my first time building drawers uh, for my twins. They need a closet. They don't have a closet currently, so that's a problem. So we're going to build them something cool, and then I'm going to try to film it. Now, this is my first time ever doing any sort of thing like this. I've never done rabbit work. I'm really more of a rough carpenter. So this is gonna take me a little bit outside of my comfort zone. But hey, that's not a bad thing. All right, let's get to it. The first thing you should always do when you're gonna do something new like this, plan it out as much as you can. You gotta catch the dream, the vision. So I like to do a little cute little drawing. I'll sit down, I'll draw some pictures out, and then take some measurements and kind of scale the drawing up. Make sure it's gonna work. Now this is the drawing that I liked. And then the drawing on the left is the ones that my kids liked. Now they want the one on the left because it splits them up a little bit more, gives them a little bit more separation. So now that I know that, then I kind of click into engineering mode. Start taking some real measurements. How are you gonna do this? How am I gonna accomplish this? You're going to find a couple of problems here, and then you'll be able to iron them out. Don't think you're going to be able to catch all the problems. We're not professionals here. I scale out my drawing with the cubes, the shoes, and the clothing storage in mind. This big built-in cabinet that I'm making is basically a piece of IKEA furniture on steroids. Now this project is going to be heavy, heavy, heavy on the table saw usage. So here's a disclaimer for you. I would be willing to bet that every construction worker knows at least one carpenter with only nine fingers. These things are merciless and they will take a finger and they will not apologize for it. So be careful. Have a respect for the tool. Okay, so I'm gonna do one extra little thing here for this video. Because this is a way out of my comfort zone project of sort of cabinetry, I'm gonna estimate how much I think it's gonna cost me. And then we can look at that and laugh at it at the end of the project and how much it actually cost me. So right now I'm looking at like, if I buy high-end lumber, which is what I'm leaning on right now, I'm guessing I'm gonna spend about 300 bucks in lumber. 50 bucks in screws, 25 bucks in paint, and uh, you know, 25 bucks in wood glue. So I'm talking like $400 I'm estimating it's gonna cost me to build this closet. All right. I'll tell you what, those sheets got heavier and heavier as the day goes on. Safety first, everybody. Take it from somebody who's deaf. Wear some earplugs when you're running high-pitched saws. Set your depth on your saw. Start ripping. I took my measurements from my plan, and I started ripping down all the stuff. I think in carpenter lingo, they call this breaking down the sheet goods. Now I decided I wanted to make these 16 inches deep and 92 inches tall. That gets me just under the slope of the ceiling. I realized once I started making my cross cuts, I couldn't reach the other side with my miter saw. I need another tool. I'll tell you, every time I do a new project, there's always another tool to buy. This time, it's a tool I have to make. I'm not going to be able to build this cabinet without a table saw sled. So I think today's build is going to make a shift from cabinet making to sled making. All right, to make my crosscut sled, I'm using a piece of scrap wood. Now this is a risk. 
if the thing is too warped and might give me some bad cuts. But I'm going to take a chance because I don't want to waste time. Of course, take the trusty sander and sand everything as smooth as I can. Now my plan with the crosscut sled is to use it for all my rabbiting joints and then use it additionally for all my crosscuts. Should allow me to make an accurate cut all the way across the 16 inch board as well as gouging out the rabbits. I measure what my guide rail thickness is and then I start trying to cut a piece that is absolutely perfect. This took me a few tries to get it dead on, but that's important. No slop on those rails, otherwise you're going to have slop on your cuts. Pin this sucker all together and it ran really smooth. The next thing I did is I had to rip it through and then I had to test for square. It's the most important point of a cross cut sled, you need to be able to cut square. The way I did this is I made the cut and then I flipped the board over to check the opposite side to make sure it was perfect. And you know what? It was, it was perfect. First time. I used my piece of crap cross cut sled to start ripping 8 million boards. Now when I started ripping these boards down, I wasn't using any kind of a stop. This made me have to rely on my own eye and there were some small imperfections. Wasn't the end of the world because my rabbits I was doing by eye. Those ended up having perfections as well. I broke down all my lumber, then I started on the rabbits. Now I did these rabbits without a dado stack, just repeatedly going back and forth over the table saw. Now I made a mistake on this. I should have used a sacrificial piece to make sure my outside cuts were perfect before cutting my expensive plywood. But I didn't do that my first time trying it out. So there are some small gaps and then some of them were just way too tight. But you live and you learn. Now of course if you go to wood shop you have 10,000 clamps. I don't have 10,000 clamps but I have a nail gun. So I glued them up slid the boards in, and then nailed it together with 16 gauge nails. Now because my rabbits weren't perfect, some of these gave me some real trouble. And I had to go back and visit it and visit it and visit it. Repeated the process on the other side, having to hammer the areas that I was not perfect on, then nailed it all in place, and then I gave it a day to dry. Of course then I did that times two. But you don't need to see the second one, do you? Ta-da! This is two. After I got the main carcasses in, I took some more measurements about what my expectations were and what the realization is of what it actually is. I added some stiffener boards on the back of the carcasses. Now these boards are going to be for two reasons. They're going to be one to help keep it a little bit more rigid and square and then two to have something to screw it down with. Of course, I didn't have to worry about it because they're dead plump. I attached the cabinets to the wall, making sure they were plumb. Look at those guns. Next step is to build the cube shelving for the center. Here's a tip for you. If you have a lot of sheets to rip, get some insulation and then let the saw cut into the insulation. Steady work table. I also want to call out that sweet mid-arm tattoo I have. That's nice looking stuff right there. Somebody remind me to wear a full length shirt next time. So wouldn't you know it, I have to rip more boards. I noticed when I was making these cuts with my miter saw that they were splintering the back side of the boards a little bit. I probably should have bought a new blade. That blade's had it pretty rough. Man, you know, it's not about... <sighs> this video is not about exactly how to do it. Because I don't know how to exactly do it. But this is an encouragement to you. That if I can do it, you can do it. Just because it's a project that you've never done before, doesn't mean you can't do it. It might mean it's not the project you need to work on right now. For instance, I didn't start with a garage build. 
right? I started with uh, something that was like mostly done and then sort of remodeled it. Started with a remodel. And then I worked on to a small addition and then a finished basement. And then one thing after another, after another and build your way up. And then you take on a new project. But every time I did that, every time I took on a new project, I had never gone to that level. So I want to ask you, what's your level? What's next for you? Just because you've never done it doesn't mean you can't. Maybe it's a really big bite to chew off. Maybe. But do you know how you swallow an elephant? One bite at a time. One bite at a time. Been chewing on this one for three years. The beauty of the table saw is it allows you to set an exact measurement and then make that same exact cut over and over and over and over again. In fact, the table saw is the number one tool for this job. My middle shelves, I just took some half inch plywood, made a million cuts, and then measured and mounted them all square. Made my own little quick and dirty cube storage. No rabbits here because I cheaped out and went with half inch plywood. And so I don't want a rabbit half inch plywood. There no, won't be very much left. I did the same thing with these. Added a little backer piece, top and bottom. And that's going to allow me, one, to keep this thing a little bit more rigid while I'm working. And then two, to secure it to the wall. Once it was secured to the wall... I put the top piece on to kind of tie it all together. Once again, nail gun comes into play with some 18 inch, 18 gauge or 16 gauge, I can't remember, nails. Well, I've got most of the carcass done, but I can't make a decision on the height of the shoe shelving. I don't know whether I should let my OCD be satisfied and lay them out with the level of the cube shelving or if I should compress them so I can fit more. I can't decide. All right, fast forward from my shoe shelving. Voila. I went with a half analistic tendency method so every third shelf is even with the cubes and this turned out pretty nice looking <clears throat> so today next eight hours I'm going to edge trim and sand it Aha! Now for the sanding part. One regret is that I didn't take the time to sand it in the garage. I built it in place because I was nervous it wasn't going to fit right. So I have to sand it in the bedroom. Which if you've ever run a sander, you know it's going everywhere. So I covered up everything I possibly could in that bedroom and then just started sanding and sanding and sanding and sanding. I made sure all of the faces were nice and flush with each other. Hi, Abby. Because that edge guard is going to want to run nice and smooth. It's going to look real good. Okay, I'm going to give you some tips on how to apply caulking because, man, I have learned the hard way. I've been using this stuff for 20 some odd years. And maybe just this last year, I started to put it on without it being a complete disaster. So tip number one, you want the tiniest of cuts on the tip. You want to be able to stick your little stabby finger do in there just barely. That's the size of hole you want sticking out of the end of this thing. Number two, do not buy a cheap caulking gun. Buy a decent caulking gun that has a good release trigger because you are going to be using this trigger all the time you apply trigger apply trigger use that trigger all the time because that stops the sugar blossom from squeezing out and getting everywhere the cheap caulking guns don't really release 
pressure that well. And so you end up with that every single time. And then tip number three, you wanna use spit on your finger, which is gross, or you could use soapy water, but let's just use spit, right? We're already, we're already gross, we're construction workers. <laughs> so, oh, and paper towels, like a roll per, a roll, a roll of paper towels per tube of caulking. That's the roll. I applied caulking in all of the joints that had any sort of little crack. Of course, if you plan on staining this, you wouldn't do that. But two reasons. One, I know I'm painting this. And two, my rabbits were not perfect. Another reason to consider a dado stack if you want to do this. If you're going to stain the wood or leave it natural wood color, you're going to need to be way more accurate. I didn't, so I just caulked it all. Okay, now plan is to take all of that edge banding, start applying the edge banding. I'm gonna go with the three quarter inch stuff first because I can't find half inch anywhere. I'm gonna have to order it on Amazon. So first time trying edge banding, let's go for it. The edge banding is really, really easy. Way easier than I thought. You basically just iron it on and all this is, is consists of, it basically feels like hot glue on the back of a piece of veneer plywood. So you melt the hot glue, it sticks to the plywood, and then you cut and sand the edges smooth. I'm gonna fast forward through the painting part because I hate watching painting, so I just assume you guys do too. So fast forward and voila! This took two coats of paint. Now this isn't just regular white. First coat was regular white. This is called whipped cream and it's gorgeous. All right, this is my talking head conclusion shot. Let's talk about the project. Let's talk about how long it took me, how much money, was it worth it? Is it better than Ikea? And uh, what's the future? Because I still have a bunch of stuff left to do. So number one, was it worth it? Yeah, it was worth it. Total time, about three Saturdays worth. All right, total cost. And I'm curious if you guys have an idea of what you think it cost. If you're brave enough to venture a guess, let me know in the comments. Just material, I'm about 600 bucks in. I did a little search on Ikea furniture. It's not exactly apples to apples comparison, but to purchase Ikea replacements for this, so Ikea dressers, Ikea cube storage, and then Ikea bookshelves in the middle there. We're talking about 800 bucks. Best I could sort. Now that's not apples to apples because one, all my stuff is, um, these, are, these are bigger dimensional wise than the Ikea. And it's also three quarter and half inch plywood. So it's obviously constructed a little bit more robustly. That said, the real cost on this project was time. This was death by a thousand cuts of a table saw. It took me forever working with that table saw. It was fun at first, but when you have this many shelves to build, it gets boring real quick. Future, what am I gonna do with this thing? So I got a bunch to do with it here. I still have, you'll notice the drawers are in but you didn't see any footage of the drawers, did you? That's because the video's too long already. So I'm gonna save those for when I do the rest of the stuff. There's three things that you're gonna see in the next, the next, uh, what's the term? Guys, I say video too much. There's three things you're gonna see in my next episode. You're gonna see lighting. I wanna do lighting in this. I'm not really sure how I wanna do it quite yet, but I know I wanna do some lighting in there. You're gonna see me build the drawers. This is where the dado stack really came into play. Building these drawers allowed me to make them spot on. And then the third thing is I'm gonna do some barn doors. I'm gonna build the doors because this is too tall for regular doors. And then I'm gonna 
either build or buy the barn door rack assembly, if you will. I'm not sure. We'll explore that on, we'll explore that in the next week as to whether it's worth buying or building. So that's what's coming up. Thanks for watching. See ya. I might get it. What if I get it on your camera? Do I do terrified face? Yeah, 100% terrified face. That's what sells it. All right, go. <laughs> Can you not squeeze it? You I'm scared. It. I'm, I'm the one that's going to get ketchup on me. <laughs> you know what? Hang on a second here. Okay. All right. I'm going to come down so I can see your horror. <laughs> All right, you ready? Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it got on my nose a little bit. <laughs>